but we kind of know it's going to the self, and you can see the connector right there. Okay, um, can I get an orientation on where we put the BBS in relation to this? BBS? The BBS, the, the thing we brought over here. Yeah. yeah. It's, um, I think it's straight ahead of us. I just want to get a visual because of the that orange oily yeah. and where when we lift it obviously like where it's gonna go and just wanna or is it to the left? Oh, we have no snail trail. I think we came from the south or from the southeast. So it should be towards the southeast. On the ground within view, anyways. Yeah. Just kind of. My impression was even more towards your port side as we showed up. Uh, hmm. I don't think it was. We didn't come from there. The it is right ahead, right? Yep. Oh, yeah, there it yeah. is. Okay. So let's. I just want to identify which direction west yes the hydrophone it is east of the hydrophone or north it's very close to it yeah you get there and then spin around and look at the hydrophone tell mm -hmm. me which way that is and what and what distance we get yeah Okay, it is like five meters east of it. Let me just get some targets in, just to make sure. Because once we get to the hook phase, I just want to be aware of where everything is in space. Fifteen? Ten. What's that say? Oh, ten. Seven? Seven, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so then ship positioning, right? So we dropped the BBS here. The things we need to do are get the larval trap and the CTD and the beacon, correct? Yeah. And those are at the IP. So. I'll need to bring Atalanta closer to the IP, but the question is how can I split the difference so we could be doing work at the IP while we're lowering the hook and then her can come back here, right? Is that, is that kind of what we're looking at? Yeah. Okay. Um, well. <coughs> so Dan, on I'll look. I'll do it over here on, on, uh, Ravnav. So I can bring up Hypac if you want. Sure. So yeah. Easy. Uh, which button is it? Uh, serve. Yeah. Okay. So we have the ship, right. Hercules, Argus. Right. We're at the hydrophone over here, right. and the IP is somewhere down here. Uh, it's about fifty meters away. So the thought is, can we put Argus somewhere in here where we can do access with the IP and then potentially be lowering the hook that whole time and then uh, maybe have to move Argus a little bit to get back to the hydrophone if we can't reach. What's, um, what's the? It's about 50, but I don't know that because we haven't been to the IP in a bit and our nav's been a bit Ship's wonky. on a north heading. Yeah. Ship's on a north heading, so mm -hmm. it'll come over here. Any movement we'll have to do would hopefully be minor north-south moves, and then to place the hook, we'll have to do a west step, potentially. Yeah, north-south seems all right. Looks, you know, you're not trying to swing the light wire into the heavy wire. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'll try to, for now, move... Atalanta just a little bit closer to the IP, see what we got for scope. Once we're in position there, 
I can get the um, the wire uh, started, and that'll be 45 minutes, which will probably be as long as it takes us to get the CTD, the beacon, and the larval traps, right? Yeah, is Mike aware that we're going to... I'm going to, yeah, oh, so okay. I'm going to move the ship a bit more towards the IP, like 20 meters, and we're going to head towards the IP, and I'll get Mike. Okay, sound good? Yep. Okay. Yep. Bridge, nav. Can we step two zero meters bearing two zero zero? Thank you. Okay, while we're making that step and when we do it, try to go towards the IP down here. This will be in somewhere in this region, hopefully. Watch out, there's a CTD monument there on the way. While we're doing that, I will go get Mike. While Rennie's doing that, we just got a question about how long will this expedition continue? <laughs> <laughs> Is that from you? Uh, how long? How long? Bridge now. What day is it? <laughs> uh, it's we we're back in Victoria on the 18th. Can we have aft deck lights, please? Yes, thank you. It will go on forever. Only this now. <laughs> um, Dan, is that cable to the right? Is it clear? Yeah. The, uh, we haven't really checked out whether there's anything on that um, oily. Pretty sure there shouldn't be anything, but... Which one? The one... Just to your right. It's also going in the same heading as you. It originally came from the IP as well. The light's coming on. Roger that. There, that one. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, so there seems to be nothing. Nothing crazy. Once we reach the bend, we're halfway to the IP, I assume. So better with those off? Or on? No. I can't tell. I can't tell either. Maybe off. Yeah, I think so. Okay, Dan. I've been waiting all night to say this, but quit putting, quit pushing buttons and flying that ROV. <laughs> uh, push all the three greens that say auto. Turn all the monos off. No, that, not that one. You need that one. Yeah, turn that one. There you go. I oh, got control of it. Um, 
Turn your joystick gain down to maybe like 75. It'll be a little more. Yeah, there you go. Come down and find some seabed and play around in a generally south southeast direction. So, if I remember, on this guy, up is up, down is down. And I push forward to hit the dirt. Gotcha. Remember, it's heavy, so like as soon as you can see the seabed, I'd let go of the verts. So you can nail them right now. Looks like I'm going out uh, higher that way. Yeah. What's going on here? You told me to join. Oh, it's coming down. It's like, you know, the power of a Volkswagen bug in a frickin' 1972 Chevy Suburban. Gotcha. That's about how fast it. Well, it's the same horsepower as uh, Luukai in a vehicle that's about three times the size. Yeah. So there's no Z bias at all right now at all, so it's going to be... So i got to kind of... You can dial some in. It's this one here, right? Yeah, if you spin it counterclockwise to around 25, minus 25%. Counterclockwise? Yeah, you want to minus pluses up. Yeah. Clockwise. Oh, uh, yeah. Perfect. No, other way. You want to minus sign there. Meanwhile, thrust down. Gotcha. Meanwhile, thrust down. Uh, yeah, that's probably a good idea. Uh, there's a sonar target just ahead of you. Come fly ahead a little. Thrust down. Come back down. You don't want too much because then it's yeah. gonna it's gonna tend to put uh, me in the dirt. Yeah. I want nice and neutral. And uh, bring your heading back around to uh, south southeast. Two twenty five is. Cascadia you a base at IP. Yeah. I saw it light up on the sonar there. Okay. How are we doing? Uh, training wheels. Okay. We're doing fine. Yeah, you're doing Always great. along out in front of Atlanta. Roger. Well, I guess head for that sonar target there. So, when you get a sonar target, if you, um, like, lock in your heading and then lateral towards it, or you can change your heading a little right now, a couple degrees maybe, and yeah, lock in your auto heading there, and then let her sweep, and uh, I'll come a little closer to the seabed. Yeah, I'm coming down. There's a bunch Go of junk out there. It's maybe a maybe a cable there and some stuff there, 15 meters away. Ooh, there's a big one. We'll find some of that stuff. I've got something. You got something, all right. Found the uh. Found something. 
That's the that is the IP in the background. CTD monument, right? So if you completely let go of the sticks now, does it float up? Yeah, it was. I just oh, added a little Z bias. No, no, I I'm loath to fly it with over 30 myself because I like to, you know, not slam it in the seabed. Yeah. <laughs> So too much Z-bias when you're coming down and then you let go of it, you still got all that Z-bias and it, it keeps your trajectory downward going longer than I like. Just my personal. Most people, <coughs> depending on how we're ballast, fly at around 30, 35 if you're doing like flying zooms. Okay, that makes sense. I like to be able to let go of it and have it float up. So I would try 30. <coughs> I had 30 and it started floating up pretty yeah, quickly. Yeah, well then, then you got to thrust down. So. Okay, Derek, where are the larval traps in relation uh, to the IP? The larval traps are essentially right behind us. They're behind us. Okay. Yeah. And will that be the first thing we want to do and then the CTD after? Yeah, the larval traps, ideally we do that just before we go to do the hook operation. So yeah, that feels we good. can take the CTD over there now, over to the broadband seismometer as a first step. So that, that stuff's ready there. Okay. Uh, we can put the beacon. That's both of those items are right here. Yeah. We can put the beacon in one of the boxes as well. Okay, pilots. We'll we'll do that then. Hopefully, it fits in the front box. What are we doing? We'll grab the beacon and the CTD. We'll bring the CTD back to where the BBS is, and then we'll come back here and grab the larval traps um, at the uh, once we're ready to go back for the hook yeah just because we don't want to do too much dust like too much stuff with a lot of traps in the um, oh, okay all right danny i'll trade you back sorry i thought we were going to have more time to play around we actually do have you don't a want me to try this if you want <coughs> um i yep. don't want to dust it up here by the traps and all we have some time stuff. because they need to rig up the hook and start lowering but but if we want to get this out of the way yeah. then we can do this and be yeah. ready i'll well trade back when okay. I'm not working. No problem. Ah. Locked, locked in. So I guess one of the questions is where the beacon will go, knowing we have to put the larval traps in too, right? Do you think that beacon can fit in the front box? No. Nope. We have not been able to put them in the front box before. Hmm. Does it have a clip on it? Well, maybe we'll leave. Maybe we'll leave the beacon then till later. We're Does gonna be back here, aren't we? I just will think if we put it in the side box, we're not going to fit the larval traps. Eh. Uh, First, this or unless you think we can, then what's going on here? Oh, happy to do, some. happy to try. No, I wouldn't. Yeah, I don't know how much we're saving. I don't know what we got in the starboard box already. What kinds of stuff? I haven't been here before, so I'm going to look around for a minute. What else is here I can knock over? <laughs> Well, there's that you can knock over this yellow one. It's huh? got nothing on it. <laughs> Gives you good practice for CTD. Uh, <laughs> when you say the larval traps are behind us, do you mean there's a pot potential to sit on them? Or yeah, don't sit down. So we sh you can see them if you just turn around. There. Yeah, I just want to kind of get my bearing here. Cause yeah, right. Uh, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff to check out if you wanted to do that. Uh, oh, you know, no, probably not. There is what we something we can do. We drop two bead bags. And they are off to the east, and we haven't seen them. But we, that's not important. No, so if you don't want to do that. that no. <laughs> no, no, no. We did not that, that much scouting around. around. You're yeah. talking about the ones we. Yeah. Did, did that sounds know. like a good job for Danny to do. No, we we we, we did Bean some we, we did some serious <laughs> hunting there for them. <laughs> oh, do you know? Because and we dropped. You know, we dropped those ones. See the ones with the beacon on it. Yeah. yeah. And it traveled quite a bit. Yes. So we were thinking the other ones traveled the same amount. Oh, okay. So yeah. I think you you were just looking in the wrong spot when it you were could, looking. It could very well be, but I don't know if we'll have 
be playing around with the scope. Are with we the meant to recover the CTD or? Yeah. The CTD and the broadband came down on the porch together. How part of the, be the bead bags travel? And you want to get up by wind? <laughs> Pardon? Yeah, no, that, the timing of the, that's not, uh, yeah. <laughs> Good board currently says six. We'll come up at like two meters a minute. Yeah. So oh, yeah. we'll we'll bring, yeah, I think Josh estimated under 20. Um, Time do we start this dive? Uh, 16 hours, 22 minutes ago. Really? Yeah. 20 hour dive. He was talking about needing to uh, needing to drop weights possibly once we get the BBS and the <laughs> we CT. have a we have a bean bag in them. Yeah, that'll probably have to go. When they came down, um, they were even with the broadband and the oh no, never mind. It's a nice curly key on that cable. I thought that they had to have two CTDs on the two. ROV just to stay on the bottom. And we do have a bean bag in the starboard box. And maybe there's some more yeah. ones. That was ballast. Where we have not paid attention to it. <coughs> I know I saw three. So uh, sorry, I lost the plot. What are we doing? We're gonna get we're gonna make sure we don't land on the larval traps. We're gonna get the C T D and bring it over to the BBS. The beacon will either get now or we'll get with the larval traps later. Is that correct, Dirk? Yeah, I mean so we're grabbing the CTD and we're bringing it over to the broadband. Yeah, because those two will be recovered with the That's vehicle. The broadband. Oh, where I left the, the uh, sphere. Yeah. The other, yeah. Roger. The CTD being uh, the one on the ground is the one that we're taking, right? Right, Dirk. The one on the ground, yeah. Yeah. Let's check the one. for it there too. Buried underneath it, of course. Or no, is it behind? No, it's got to be there. Yeah, Buried. It's sitting underneath it. there and stick it in the magnum jaws that would be great in the magnum jaw yeah okay and i will grab it down low oh you can yeah you can grab it up high and then dangle it in the jaws might be easier Just a bit, probably. Open. Um, lift it, Danny, lift it up above and just put the rope in, like dangle it in the jaws. Gotcha. So you grab, uh, you can loose your jaws a little. And let, there you go. That's what I wanted. <coughs> I'm going to turn on the porch lights here. Oh, that's a little better. Now we can see what we're doing. Uh, yeah, we just got the rope in the jaw somewhere. It looks like the, oh, the second bead bag drop that we did, the Here, bead bag on, landing landed 50 meters west of it. Is that right? That no, sounds right. Uh, yeah. Don't so lift the it up, but just get a, get a grip on that's that. That's it. And it traveled there. essentially all 50 meters in the first half of the water column, and then it just dropped wow. straight down from there. Uh, got it. So then... Okay, hold that. We would expect, yeah, it's too far south, unfortunately, to look for while we're doing the hook stuff. But... And that was just completely negative, no flotation, right? Based on that 
the information you just gave, can you mark a, sure. a point where it's like potential to be thugs? Just so we can have that as a future reference. Okay, you can swing that to if the you right. You can give that now. to Ulrike. Yep. To put down. Maybe two B bags. Watch out for that hose too. It's you don't want to get caught up in that thing. You can yep. see it in here. The hose is on the right hand side of me. Thank you, got it. How long is this cable? Uh, it's a 10 meter cable. Right here. Coming up on Atlanta. It's slinky, so it's maybe only three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's got that stuff sticking up there, so. And then we are just going back north. Yeah, right. So the thing to do is to put it east of the hydrophone because the oilies run south from the hydrophone down. That w that'll come up with it. Yeah, it'd be nice if we can put it by the broadband so we can just sit. And yeah, pick up stuff together. Yeah. Here comes a dust cloud. Go for van. Two four zero five. Roger, thank you. That's it. That's the one that I want to use. Um, you want to come up five or ten meters? I'm flying right under you there. Sure. You don't gotta bother turning the head around because we're gonna. Right back. Oh, sorry, you wanted this thing right by the BBS? Yep, um, and so that is this one right here. All right. Five meter delta. Uh -huh. Okay, you can come back down now. <coughs> down ten. Coming down ten. Five meter delta. Okay, I might have to come down another ten or five at least. Coming down five. Oh, AJ. Uh, yeah, come down to twenty-five, Danny. <coughs> Sure you got yeah, come down another five. Coming down another five. Mm, I changed my mind. So I guess when we recover, we'll have this on the porch because we'll we'll have the whole mess on the porch. What's uh, coming down on the hook? 
I'm going to come down and recover some old instrument here. Okay, can put that connector down there. <coughs> Let's drop it. Oh, watch that white hose. <laughs> Are we doing okay with that suction hose on the right hand side? Yeah. Okay. I can't see it here. Danny can see it in his uh, personal camera, really. What do you want? Nothing. I just uh, couldn't see it. <coughs> it's uh, more of a traditional way to rig a suction hose hanging over the shoulder like that. Cause even though it looks like it's in the way, it's... Nah. Okay, you can come up. No, I'm going to come back underneath you. Coming up. So Dan, you think this HVAC sensor, we just try and restart it, or you think it's uh, replace uh, it? I don't know. I didn't even look at what sensor it was. Uh, I think it's the one, it's either the one over there on the right or the one behind rack. What does no, mode it? It's the one that does temp, van A temp, and I think the barometer. Oh, yeah. It's uh, the cheap one Jonathan sent me. Yeah, you could try unplugging it, plugging it back in. It's that um, wall work right there. The top one? Yeah. This one coming undone. Oh no, we lost telemetry. <laughs> Give it a good 30. And it'll take me, what, five minutes to get an update on that? Uh, I'm not sure what I got said on that one, yeah, probably. I need to give you some more leash. Yep, you can come down. Okay. Go for Van. Uh, we're good for as far as ship position, you guys good? Yep. Uh, stand by one. Hey, uh, Dirt. What we doing now? Uh, we're going to get more crap, I guess. Right there, so after we hook that, and we follow it up, and then we go away, we come back down, and then we go get that business. 
what are we getting here, Randy? Another CTD uh, or the beacon or? The beacon and then the larval traps, but I think they want to hold off on that. So they were talk. I heard some rumors of push cores back there. So I'll, I, let, I'll let AJ I can get the, uh, direct you. I can, okay. I'll probably get the beacon, I guess. Yeah, as long as you can stow it and then the larval traps. And I, I think he said there's a bead bag in the starboard and however yeah. you want to do that order of operations. Is that attached to a bean bag? Uh, it might be. I reach down and check. I think that's just sitting there. I don't know. Come down uh, five meters. Coming down five meters. Okay, picked up. That was a sweet landing. Bungee. Can you put the downlights on? Uh, there we go. Oh, it's attached. Oh, it's attached. I can make it unattached. Uh, let's pick up the beacon, Danny. Okay. Where's it going? Yeah, how much you got there? Yeah. Good morning. You okay with the watch change of video here? Yeah, Reg. Alright, going off pounds. Enjoy. Okay, same game. I'm gonna fly under your here. Are we just staging this by the other collectibles? Yeah, Raj. Right. You wanna swing it out of the swing it out to the right a little? Minding your hose, hoser. You can put it out in front of the vehicle, out to the right. Well, I just wanted to make it in case I dropped it, it wouldn't go into the abyss. That's all right. <coughs> They're gonna, we're gonna drop it in the abyss. You can actually put it out in front and down below the vehicle. Okay. I'm just used to treating these like gold bars. Uh, you'll have to come up. Come down, you mean? Uh, no, I was underneath you there, so. Yeah. Now you can come down. Yeah. I come up and down every time I fly under. I'm flying right under you, right? And then you got to come down to give me enough leash to get down here. Yep. <coughs> Where's that foot pedal at? <laughs> Mm 
Welcome, Megan. Let me know when you want me to toss this thing. I can drop it there on the uh, CTD so it's not in the mud. Yeah, drop it there. Perfect. All right. I guess we're waiting for the hook to come down. I guess. Um, waiting for him to rig the hook. Yeah. Do we want to do push cores in the meantime? I think we can take push cores pretty much anywhere that's, um, you know, not super disturbed. So is there a happy spot for you to wait for the hook? Yeah, right. Uh, push cores, huh? Oh, yeah. Nice. We'll do all five. Morning, Kim. Morning. How are y'all? I'm good. I'm good. I had a good night's sleep. Don't know about AJ. <laughs> I have not been sleeping very well. I haven't either. I don't and know And it why. messed me up that yesterday we weren't on watch because I was wide awake from 12 uh, to 5. Yeah. <laughs> it's tough to stay up during those. Yeah. I was able to keep busy, probably could have used an app, but... That is why I don't have Z-Bias on, because I would have augured in, because I can't let go of it and it doesn't float up fast enough. Gotcha. I like to let go and up it comes. Especially if you're not paying attention for a minute, or, you know. Video's back on. Almost looks like everywhere is disturbed. Yeah. Been a lot of robots in this area. It's kind of like you dug a hole or something. Coming back up. Mm. All right. Well, you're good. Coming down, actually. Right? Uh, okay. Forget where the larval traps are from here. They're over to the right. To the right. Yeah, they're northwest of the ID. There they are. The far ones are the new ones, the closer ones are the old ones. These are the new ones here? Yeah, those are the new ones. And they want push cores somewhere in this neighborhood. Yeah, over here would be fine, I think. Sean, was there any preference for Fabio? All he said was anywhere relatively undisturbed yeah. in the Cascadia Basin. There's the other larval traps out okay, there. Those are the far ones, and then I guess the ones underneath us are the new ones, the old Just ones. Get to know the neighborhood here. Yeah, the the old ones should be the northernmost ones. So they should be on the right. So on 
interior north of this is yeah, virgin should, ground. Should be pretty good. Facing north, and we didn't have too bad of a earlier. So we're not even on the seabed yet, and there's a dust cloud. It's probably from us putting that stuff down. <coughs> we're flying back and forth, and it's exactly what it is. water so that means we're on the wrong side of it come down five meters coming down I'm just keeping your uh, delta around 30, 35. Perfect. Somewhat challenging to do the push cars with the hose there. I'm on the outside of the hose. Yeah. We'll make it happen. Slow and steady. Yeah, do what you can. That's all we can do. Go ahead, deck. Roger, tracking the beacon now. Okay. Swapping out your cameras. Roger. Right little booble into craft. I can change it for you. Do you know how to do this? Yeah. We've taught you to do this. What do you want to change it to? Good morning. Morning. Yeah, Roger. 
really don't want to change heading while no, we're No, he can change his heading, for fuck's sakes. Change your heading. Well, I guess we're really shallow, so if you feel like we need to do it now, now is the best time. Um, instead of when it... Okay. He's got to be able to change his heading, Megan, otherwise we'll lose DP. that camo wasn't doing but Oriel, that. I mean now is the better time to change our heading because the package isn't very deep but if we change our heading too much while it's deep we could entwine the wires so just take it slow okay okay yeah he Rennie should have let him earlier I didn't want to argue with Rennie because yeah. it was too close to shift change <laughs> The ship, if the ship needs to change their heading for weather, you gotta, you know, you can't tell them no, because then the DP is gonna red line and we lose position. Yeah, well, and then we're be really, even worse. yeah. But <coughs> Rennie told me that we shouldn't change heading. Shouldn't being the key word, but five degrees and to the starboard is that's the you know, that's the okay way. Okay. Yeah, I didn't want to argue with Rennie. <laughs> well, Rennie's got a lot of experience doing this. Well, yeah, he's done a lot of two-wire ups. Is that the... Yeah, the that's the beacon. Gotcha. This is the old trail, so I made it shorter oh, so it wouldn't be so confusing, because it was like all over here. Yeah, you couldn't see the smear. new. Ooh. Freeze fail. Throw for the hose. <laughs> so, uh, in the right, in the upper arm there? Yeah. Yeah. Can you get me a waypoint okay, for this? Okay, yeah. Whatever's comfortable. Yeah. Okay. What is this oddball? Uh, these are my handles, which everyone hates. And you notice you saw those on Ruben's push course. I wonder where he got that idea. That was an authorized R&D, because I already R&D'd it from Sebastian, who R&D'd it from Embart. Yeah, what, so a radical heading change, you know, like 45 or something like that, but yeah. a couple degrees. No, that's no drama. Yeah, I just like how it was the uh, second, seconds after we put the package in the water. So, but yeah, you're right. We should have changed heading before we put anything in the water. Yeah, I should have checked with the bridge and said, are you happy with this heading? We're going to deploy a package. But also, so the other thing you're dealing with is um, Oreos just come on watch and he might have a little different style of how he likes so mm -hmm. he's it's typical to want a 10 or 15 degree heading change at watch yeah. change. Danny and I are used to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's really nice when uh, when the bridge actually asks you uh, about the heading change before they just go ahead and do it. Well, I've, I've, yeah, it's taken some. Um, they've learned because mm -hmm. I 
It's yell, a learning process. I, I yell at them if they don't. <laughs> well, it's also good that our access is around the A-frame and not around the DP itself. We've learned that one as well. We've had some uh, ship's officers that were very adamant that they knew better than the ROV people in the uh, who were hanging off the back of the ship, and they ran over our wire a few times. Yeah, I've had more than one wire taking paint off the ship's hull. Also, not the end of the world. Well, people the kilo is a little. People get all excited about it when it happens. Kilo one is a little funny because we don't have a hole between there, so the wire goes in the center, uh -huh. and then it goes around the prop, mm -hmm. and then we have a bad day. And I may be thinking, uh, speaking from experience, because we do that quite a bit. They've got your 6-8 in, in the frickin' wheel before? Uh, they didn't get the 6-8 in the wheel, but they've gotten a lot of other things that we've pulled in through the A-frame. Into the wheels? Yep. Definitely not going out with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, you told me all though. <laughs> I'm gonna give a chase at this point. What's that? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Here, how smooth, how That's straight of a line can I do? Go out with you guys so they can then boss me around. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is how we do things, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then you can teach us a thing or two about correct all of the operations. Yeah. You'll just find that, I don't know, we worry about things that aren't really a problem sometimes. We do too. Like the ship heading, it changing its heading two degrees. Mm hmm. But you can say that about anybody doing anything. Yeah. I tease Rennie because he, it's his job to worry, and he usually routinely saves my bacon mm -hmm. at least once every watch. I don't know how I survive when he's not in here and do <laughs> stupid things. <laughs> well, you have Megan. Yeah. That's how you survive. <laughs> But I don't rein you in quite as well as Rennie. <laughs> What's that? I probably don't rein you in quite as well as Rennie. Uh -huh. But I am a certified, you know, uh, adult supervision. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just ask Ian. Can't believe you put a rubber band on the seabed. It's a worm. Where did the rubber band come from? The we push core. Oh, we, are you rubber them banding them in? Yeah, we secure them because they'll... Oh, they'll pop up? Uh, yeah, I doubt if they would, but... Uh, we they all, could. We just always secure them. They could get ideas. One of those things we're worried about. Do you fill your push cores with water before we launch? No. Actually, they don't. Huh. They put a uh, zip tie in the hole, and uh, they flood as they go down. Oh, okay. So it's unlikely they would come out, but we do occasionally get into them with a manip, and it's nice if they boing back down if you like start to lift one, mm -hmm. lift one up. Oh, my push coil is looking okay. Looking fantastic. That last one is a little crooked. Looks like a pretty straight line to me. Looks good to me. Megan, can you pull up lat and long for this location? Sure thing. Yeah, we, uh, well, I haven't done the hard part yet. Let's put them back in without tipping them. <laughs> Do a DVL reset first. Sure. Oh, excuse me. 
There we go. Great, thanks, Megan. No problem. Are we done with the uh, the new hose after this dive? I don't know. I think so. It, it sounds like we're only doing one. There's size another seismometer on the deck, so I have no idea when they're gonna. I asked, and they said there was only going to be one. The oh, okay. One, the other one we recovered from Mothra, we already did that one. Oh, yeah. But we don't, hmm. uh, we don't use, bee, like, we don't bury it in bee bags at Endeavor. We just lay the bee bags around it. So we already did that one. Mm. Yeah, I think this might be all the excavating we have planned for this expedition. AJ, I don't know if this is a you or Pete thing, but you're really quiet. Um, maybe it's a me thing, I don't know. Am I quiet to everyone or just you? To me. I can hear him. Oh wait, that was I can hear him. I bumped him up a little bit. Okay. okay. Thanks, Pete. Wait, what am I doing? I can just pull Welcome this one right you. back out. No, I'm trying to pull it back out. Look at that clay plug in there. You got all day. Cascadia clay. Very distinctive layers. Yeah. Black and tan. Sounds good, but maybe not in clay form. <laughs> Can I get sample salvo for uh, Dan? Mm, no, make you suffer. Okay. I mess up all my other cameras. I can uh, put it the other one right there though for you. Don't worry, I got this. You got this. Yeah, I can put the other one there. Nope, I got it. Already done. Huh? Oh, you do. You got it. Yeah. Becoming self-sufficient in your old age over there. <laughs> I've been here four weeks. I got this thing memorized. I'm good. <laughs> I've been here four years and I still haven't figured it out. Well, you should really ask some other coworkers about how I figure things out very quickly. How do you know how to do everything? Well, <laughs> study it. Because the lighting on this is absolutely horrendous. We should talk to the manufacturer about that. That's like way better what, what you got there instead of looking way over here at pictures. But so how it usually works is the, you know, there's an intern sitting there and the Herc pilot's doing this. That's why they're here. The interns are not allowed to carry nine millimeters or touch the craft manipulator. Oh, they're not? Typically not, no. They're just young oh. kids that they don't even know what a 916th wrench is, half of them. <coughs> but they can, like, you know, do computations to tell you how to. Trevor told me the other day I was the first intern he let take a sample. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I, s I squeezed the, the hell out of an anemone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad well, I'm not an Well, anemones are pretty squishy. It doesn't take much yep. to still squeeze got the, them. Still got the sample. That's yeah, our friend, yeah. our buddy. He's been oh. following us the whole time. Yeah, and then you so got the little guy. So much for using him as a landmark. 
Yeah, okay. one intern explaining physics, and the next one was a rocket scientist. <laughs> Physicist, very smart kids, but they pick it up. And they have a well. There's just not right. a lot of hands-on stuff. Like it's just not encouraged like it used to be. Yeah. You know, like yeah. there's like shop class, but it's all drafting now. It's you yeah. don't like you pick up actual tools. Yeah, and then you got a redneck like me. <laughs> <laughs> we had that center in red, and he was, uh, he was picking up rocks, oh. so... Did that fish get sucked up? That may have happened. Ooh, rat tails should be able to swim stronger than that. You should have seen the one that we got earlier. No, I don't <laughs> want to think about it. We definitely got some crap growing here. It's helping. Oh, I love it. I got a little bucket cam in the corner. <laughs> okay. Well, my dad made sure I knew how to use tools. He has a like wood shop down in the in the basement. Oh wow. And before I could uh, learn to drive, I had to learn how to change a tire and change a white oil. Interesting. Have you changed? It your came oil in handy. Hmm? Have you changed your oil since? Yeah. Awesome. It's too expensive. Well, now I have a new car, so I do take it to the dealership because you know it's guaranteed and all that. But when I had you know an island beater, I was like, hmm. I'm not gonna <laughs> take it somewhere. It's too expensive. My, my car doesn't need special treatment. It's only going to last a couple years anyway. And I don't want to have to sit and wait for it. You know, changing your oil doesn't take that long. You let the guys at the shop do it. You could be, like, waiting there for an hour and a half or longer. Oh, the fish is still there. Yeah, our friend, our friend, our buddy, our pal. Chonky Cusk eel friend. Mm -hmm. Are you in here, Jake? Yep, I'm back here. You wanna sit in here? Yep. And my first couple weeks Little of college, uh, knowing how to change a tire came in handy. For your friends? Yeah, so we, we had to evacuate campus because of a hurricane. And so me and some other dorm mates um, went to a place together and I didn't have a car. So like I carpooled with them and we got a flat tire on our way. And it's like me and like a bunch of dudes, and uh, <laughs> and you're the one who saves yeah, the day. Yeah, yeah. Well, we pull over. First thing one of them says is like, "I don't. Does anybody know how to change a tire?" I'm like, "Really?" <laughs> I'm like, "Yes, I know how to change a tire." So they like four of them are standing around like watching me do this. Uh, Florida peace police officer pulls over, and. Uh, he just sees me, a <laughs> small blonde girl, changing the tire. <laughs> These guys just like being completely useless. <laughs> I was like, what is this? this is wrong. <laughs> it was really funny. But he did actually help because the tire on the vehicle, the spare, was uh, rusted on. It was one of those ones that's on the undercarriage. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he was able to use his nightstick to break it free. Because <laughs> I was like, I had gotten the old tire off. I was like, couldn't get the new tire off the car. <laughs> So it worked out really well, and then we were on our way. But what if we had not had that skill set? It really came in handy. Yep. Yeah. Would have been five people staring at a tire. Yeah, <laughs> then what we would have done? I don't know. Well, we would have had to call a tow truck or something, which is probably would have been my responsibility. You are the responsible one. That's why you sit in that seat. That's probably why they were like, hey, you should ride with us. <laughs> Come on, Freeze. Stay in position. There we go. Hopefully those guys were eating some crow after that. <laughs> yeah, I think they, 
they realized it was uh, it was an advantage to have me around. Yeah. Um, they definitely bought me food that weekend to to make up for it. I also had to drive the rest of the way because they were all too freaked out to drive on the spare tire. <laughs> I'm like, all right. They didn't trust it. <laughs> Apparently, I don't know. Oh, it was a no. little bit flat, so we had to like continue on to an exit uh, to find a gas station where we could fill up the air, the tire. It was a whole thing. I do have an air pump in my trunk. I have one too. <laughs> um, I get a lot of like flats in Hawaii, like. Oh, I've had yeah, I've had to. On the road. Our roads are horrible. Yeah. yeah, I've gotten all sorts of like nails and things puncturing my tire too. I've changed a lot more of my tires since moving to Hawaii than I had ever before. Wow. I've run flats, so I don't even think I have to change my tire. Oh, fancy. In theory. <laughs> oh, I got there. So sticky. Do, do, it looks do, like it's cracked. Do. It's not. Yeah, after the first few times of having issues with my tires, I just like had to go get one of those air pumps from Costco. Looks like an interesting yeah, car sample. It's come in handy. Even when it's not like really flat, but if I'm like, oh, it's low tire pressure, I just like plug it in. Yeah. Thank you for free start. Uh, now, face. Thank you. <laughs> what? Wait. Yes, you definitely have to be polite to your technology. <laughs> yeah. I find that it goes a long way. Yeah. Yeah, as long as I don't like. Come on. Uh, no, 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 not what I want. Why are you doing this? Hope I didn't just ruin that core sample. Probably just the bottom yeah, of it. It was probably just the sticky stuff on the outside. Yeah, yeah still looks intact. I'm trying. Well, the bomb is it's kind of wedged in there. <laughs> there we go. It's only like upside down, backwards, and <laughs> completely non-intuitive. I'm sure we could switch the feed to be the opposite, right? That would just make things It'd way worse. Way worse. All right. That's okay. I got it. Go home. Thank you. So that's the package? Yep. 
Oh, little fishy. Boy. So we'll come around this way, in the package, and Argus will come this way. Come on, time to go home. Uh, X marks the spot. <laughs> I didn't know you went to the bridge. All right, now we're pretty much on standby duty waiting for that hook to come down. So as long as you are happy with where the ROV and Atalanta are, we can do whatever we want. Mm, let go away. We're gonna wow. wait until after the hook's up. Roger that. Bucket can, no, bucket can, bucket can. Uh, what depth? What depth is the uh, package at? Fifteen. I guess I can come up and start lateraling over. 
bring Argus's heading around and just prepare for it. Just taking a turn out. Sorry for all the dust storm. Danny, can you come up on the delta of five meters? You're heading around to the left, I believe. See what the wraps do. I think it's left. I got point six wraps. There you are. Remnant from last year's Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. Zoom, this zoom there, video? Yeah. Check this out while we're waiting. Purple sea cucumber? What is that? Wow. And what's the little stick thingy? Stick thingy? A worm tube. Oh, you mean right in front of it. Not moving so much. <laughs> no. Poke it with a stick. <laughs> you mean the stick worm or the sea cucumber? No, neither. Oh, uh, maybe. It's little antennas up top of it. Yeah, the antennas are going. Do they swim or like scuttle? Like what's their... Uh, we've seen them kind of shift around a little bit, but usually when I see sea cucumbers, they look like that. I didn't even know they really moved until this expedition mm. <laughs> when I saw them swimming around. 
You know they're like a delicacy in some Asian countries? I've had it before. It's interesting. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> doesn't look all that tasty. Oh. I bet it tastes sandy or I don't, something. I don't look at them no, and go, it, mm. it's actually, it tastes fine. It just tastes like seafood, but it's um, the texture is what's really huh. odd and maybe a little off-putting. Um, yeah. It tasted kind of slimy, but mm. I also think it was the sauce it was in. Hmm. I mean, most, uh, like most echinoderms, you just, you don't even eat their meat, really. Don't you just eat their gonads? <laughs> Is that what I was eating? Great. Thanks, Yeah, Sean. for sea urchins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Megan, we can't hear you. Yeah, so uh, sea urchins really don't have any meat except for their, their gonads. Mm. Their skeleton is all hydrostatic, so like they use water pressure in order to move their little tube feet and walk around on the bottom. What is this thing? And their, their outside test is just, you know, calcium permanent, like a hard shell, so that's not really edible either. Is that a box of chocolates? That looks weird. Is yeah. it a mat? A mud mat? It might be like a old style mud mat. It's definitely not what mud mats now look like. Yeah, it's, it's got like a whole a, bunch of holes in it. Just a pad yeah. that was put down with some grating that's now buried. I don't know. Seems to be an awful lot of equipment that might not be ONCs down here. Yeah, this is this this is sort of built around this uh, cork. Huh. Uh, site which predates ONC's infrastructure. I see. <coughs> is CORK an ac acronym? CORK is an acronym, yeah. Yeah. So it's deep unless you want equipment. To, but unless you want to, but I'm fine. Fun. That was, Sorry? That was fun. Like defunct equipment, then? I had fun doing it. Yeah, or it could have been something that was used in the setup of the cork. Um, I think I'll find out what cork stands for. I feel like it's. I don't know. I'm going to botch it if I try to guess it. Is it an acronym C O R K? I think so, Cable yeah. observatory something? No, I I think it's like something like circulation something retrofit kit or something. I'm going to look it up before I... Oh. Circulation observation retrofit kit? Yeah, that's the one. I, did, I couldn't... I wasn't confident enough to go with that O. Oh. Hey, hey, Jerry, this is a uh, pouch. And it's... Uh, I think it was ODP. Yeah, there we go. ODP legacy, downhole measurements. So these were boreholes. AJ, can you hear this? Yeah. Um, I think that is from the cables for those BPRs. Maybe from, could be from the Rockle system. Hmm. Oh, okay. I think they landed the grating underneath because if you land straight down, then you sink in the mud. I think that might be what it was. At one point we did something like that, maybe. If we have any Rockle style cables here, potentially useless information. We just got a pro tip from the lounge that this could also have to do with our bottom pressure recorder cable A's. I think it went over, so I heard it. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was on SPL? Yeah. Gonna be close this time. Let's 
this this little little critter. Wanna zoom in there? It's a sea pig. It's a sea pig. Yeah. Look at that. It's how That's majestic. Sea pig. Sea pigs are called scotoplanes. You mean those titanium round titanium thing with four legs on sea pigs? No, those are just pig pigs. <laughs> this one is a sea pig. Is that other one the track of a sea pig? Look at the, <laughs> the left. That's like a, weird. Looks like a footprint. Yeah. Yeah. That. Damn, what are you doing down there with your clocks? Uh. There's an uh. isopod on the sea pig. Ooh, that'd be a cool zoom. Right? It's an isopod? Looks like that sea pig found worm. dinner over there. Say a it's a scale worm. <laughs> I think the scale worm's just hitching a ride. That'd be a symbiotic relationship. Yeah, you know, it's just like, doesn't want to have to do all the walking and the swimming. <laughs> oh. oh, no, he didn't like that. He's about to get sat on. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm curious how that... Oh, and there's a munopsid isopod down by the, the sea pig as well, on the ground. Oh Those ones goodness. are the ones that have extremely long legs that they oh, use the for swimming. Oh, the ones. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and I think there might be isopods on the sea pig's antenna-like structure. The sea pig is just friends with everyone. Yeah, everybody wants to be friends with sea pig. Well, a sea pig. Doesn't it look friendly to you? Sure. It does. I love their little, little pseudopodia. Their what? Their pseudopodia. Their legs. So are, they, are they using hydrostatic pressure for those? Yep. They're just enormous tube feet. Yeah, basically. <laughs> huh. So they don't have suctions on the end, like uh, urchins or sea cucumbers. Well, some sea cucumbers have the suction tube feet, but this one, they're just kind of inflated. That is a really nice worm. And, and the amphipods, they like to build these little little tubes to get them up off the seafloor. And I think they just, these ones are like, why would I build a tube when I can just live on a sea pig? <laughs> yeah. And so that's probably a male and a female sitting there, hanging out together on their beautiful sea pig home. Aww. It's a mobile home, <laughs> part of the small tiny house movement. There's another worm joining the party. And there's a tiny sea cucumber. It's really tiny. Oh, that really, really translucent looking one. That weird um, Lebensfern thing, the the croc print, yeah. it's really strange. I, w I would think that that would be biologically made. Hmm. In the abyssal plains, there is like this hexagonal uh, Start like a set of holes that occur in the in the mud, and they always look the same. And we don't know what makes them interesting. But it's like a hexagon of whole tiny holes. They're all equally spaced apart. Did they say nav bridge? Winch. Winch. It's like subsea crop circles. Yeah. They were hailing you, I think. Uh, were they hailing? Yeah. <clears throat> Go for now. Twenty-three hundred. Roger, twenty-three hundred meters. Should come down another um, hundred. Let's do another hundred. We'll do a hundred at a time now. Winch now, can we come down another hundred meters? Can uh, Megan, can you please move the boat 20 meters at 315? Roger. Bridge now. 
Can we make a ship move 20 meters, 315? 315. 315. You should chase that. Uh, <coughs> What's the... What's the reasoning for the 315 move? I'll put the hook to the north of the hydrophone. Ah, okay. So we don't have to wait two hours to move it around once we're down here. Where's our Cuskiel friend when it's time for his close-up? Yeah. Oh, there's a weird sea cucumber. I see that, like, lump of mud in the lower right-hand corner. Oh, yeah. I was looking at the guy swimming here. You want to yeah. chase this mycid? Is that what this is? Yeah. Oh. It's an opossum shrimp. Oh, I was going to say, it looks shrimp-like. It's not actually a shrimp, but... It kind of looks like a shrimp. It might be tough. But they have this brood pouch on their stomach, so the females will hold the eggs there. And that's why they're called a possum shrimp. Do they pay possum? Get a zoom there and this weird looking thing. I think it's just a fallen jelly. Aww. Aww. Oh. Yeah. It's tuckered out. I think it's it's uh more than just tuckered. <laughs> Poor jelly. Blast a bit. So for now. 2,400 100. meters. Another 100. Another 100? Yes, please. Let's come down another 100. Okay, Jake, can you uh, come up off the seabed now? Uh, yep. Let's come up 10 meters. Coming up 10 meters. And then um, if Megan can uh, rehome the DBL, sure, actually there. Yep. And you scoot back under uh, Atalanta scoot there where it's safe. Cover. So that's 10 meters. change it the other way when we're down here because our current was <coughs> to the southeast. meter divisions on the sonar. Yeah, I should pick it up same as last time if it ever moves to the north. Oh, well, Megan, we have a question about possum shrimp. Are they related to seahorses? No. Mm -hmm. Not at all. They're still crustaceans. 
Go ahead, Winch. Okay. Roger, 20, 500 meters. Another 100 meters, please, Megan. Another 100, please. Yeah, so, um, yeah, the possum shrimp have a brood pouch, which is made up of um, two plates um, that are on its sides where uh, seahorses are actually fish. Um, so they're chordates, and uh, our possum shrimp are crustaceans. So they are in the arthropoda. <coughs> so completely different phylum. But it is interesting um, how evolution brings these animals to have similar solutions to caring for their young. Uh, there are a number of animals, even mammals, that have uh, like pouches to hold their young, and that's where the name opossum shrimp comes from, because opossums and other and marsupials have these pouches uh, to help raise their young and hold them and keep them safe. And it, that comes in handy in the deep sea because, you know, you don't want... There's a lot of things that want to eat you down here. So mm -hmm. if you're a very small thing, you're more likely to get eaten. If your parent is sheltering you, you have a little bit more chance um, of carrying on. So, you know, there's different solutions to this um, problem of consumption uh, and then also carrying on your genes and having more population growth in your species. So some animals do broadcast spawning and and that, you know, there's a lot of uh, potential there for new recruits in the community. Or you have animals that actually, you know, care for the young until they're larger. Uh, so they have fewer young, but they put in a lot of effort to help them survive. So there's a lot of different uh, strategies out there for reproduction. Sure, thank you. The fire is not moving. Go ahead, Winch. Roger, 2,600 meters. We'll do uh, 10 meters this time, Megan. 10 meters. Let's make a 10 meter step downward. Let's go down 10 meters, one zero meters. There it is. 25 meters. Yep. Yeah, we moved the boat 20 meters, but the wire didn't do jack. Yeah, it looks maybe like it's moving over slowly. No, I changed the heading. It's not very heavy. It might take longer. I don't know. Oh. Roger. Oh, there it is again. Just barely see it there. Yeah. We'll take another 10, Megan. That's it right there. Yep. Lynch oh, now. Let's come down another 10 meters. There you go. Roger. Let's hold here. Mm 
Okay, and let's both come up, uh, I'm going to, we'll both come up 20 meters, Jake, until you lighten it up in your sonar, and then we'll go get it and chase it down, because I, I can't see it. Yeah, uh, Atalanta's still drifting back from that move, I think. Yeah. <coughs> so I probably lost it. Still in the sonar. You're going to stay underneath me, and we'll come up, and yep. you, you should light it up. You should get it about 30, 40 meters altitude. 30 meters is like the standard to pick it up. Instead of 100, it's painfully slow. But safer. meter division so you may have to sneak out a little bit to find it there. Is that it? Right at the end? What's that? There's a little a little shadow of it. A little shadow at the end. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. <coughs> Alright, start driving out. Argus altitude is hopefully erroneous. Oh, yeah, when you guys are stacked on top, the U.S. fields get mad sometimes. <laughs> yeah, but Argus altitude is, like, ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> are you still coming up, Jake? Oh. No, uh, can hold, hold that. Yep. Theory, it should be out there in front of you. Yeah, I don't see, see it. it. Owner. I don't either. It's probably just at the edge of your range there. You could fly, yeah. fly ahead 10 meters, see if you can light it up. Well, I know it's there because I can see it on the Atlanta sonar. This is the one that we wanted. Yep. Herc's uh, gain, the sonar gain must be. You see the uh, gain button on there, Danny? If you click yeah. on the right screen and you pump that gain plus a few times, it should, you should be able to see that on Herc's sonar. It's there, it's just very yeah. dim. Yeah, you gotta pump the gain up a little bit. There it is. There's the hook. 35 meter altitude. Yeah, let's get a little closer to the hook. Roger that. 10 meters out. Mm, yeah, between 5 and 10, and I can believe what its depth is. Happy Heading is east. Happy Heading appears to be east. Uh, and you're probably right above the hydrophone, so... Yep. Okay, ready to come down? Ready ten. to come down. Ten. Okay, Megan, let's bring her down ten meters. Winch now. 
Coming down 10 meters. Dan, how do you like to do this? Do you let the clump hit the bottom or? No. No? You do it in the air? Yeah. Or water? <clears throat> Grab the uh, wire with well, the magnum. We haven't been here for one of our hookups No, yet. I haven't. And then we get some slack in the cable. And then and manipulate we'll, the pink we'll, hook uh, with the craft. Sta stand by AJ, we'll, yeah. I'll walk through it with you. One of my, we don't have two winches moving. You do you. Roger. Well, if I hit some mud, you can't see anything. Can't move the boat. It's a freaking pelagic mess. This will be our third one on this watch. Second uh, hook, I know, third. I forget, lost track. Roger, thank you. Okay, we're at just under 20 meters altitude. Uh, good for another uh, 10. Yep. Get, uh, now get a come little down 10 meters. Get a little closer to it. So. It's deeper than you think, so we'll, we don't want to put it in the mud. It's five meters away. Is that where you're looking down at it? It's 10 meter Roger. altitude. Okay, we'll hold that for now, Megan. Yeah. Hold here. Let's back up and see where the... No, let's get a little closer to it. I'm not... Uh, I'm still 8 meters up. Can't see the seabed. Uh, come down 2 meters, Megan. Winch now. Come down 2 meters. Mike's out there. We could uh, suck the crane in again so it's not heaving so bad. <coughs> Roger. Seven meters off the bottom. I do want to make sure I'm not like directly on top of that hydrophone. No, you're fine. You're to the east of it. Um, is Mike on the deck? Oh, you want me to call Dick? Is Mike on the deck? Yeah, ask him if he could retract the crane boom. Retract the crane boom? Yeah. Dick, now. She, she came it. back, she was just clipped. Yeah. Dick, now. Um, looking for Mike, is he on the deck? Or any crane, crane operator, any crane operator? Josh or Allison? That's all right. Well, no, we'll, we'll forgo it. Never mind. Okay. Uh, what are you at, eight now? Six. Six. Okay, come up a bit and come back and uh, show me the hydrophone and the hook.
So what we do, AJ, um, once we get the whole mess in position, basically come up and we'll grab uh, with the magnum between the two. Uh, we'll kind of aim for above the shiny tape there, the first reflective tape. Yep. And then uh, Jake will pick it up, put a little slack in the, in the wire so he's not taking the heave on the ROV. Uh, we'll put a catenary out in front of the ROV and then uh, we'll pay out and we'll come <coughs> excuse me we'll come back and uh, make the hook yeah that sounds good I'm excited to see it happen so we want to keep view of the hook all the time yeah. obviously i can let me turn off your uh down lights can't see anything I can adjust the iris a bit for us there, Pete, so we can see off in the dark. Yeah, it's getting, it's uh, darn near full. I, I see a, a cable. Yeah, a red cable you're looking for. Right over it now. Let me back up a bit more. <coughs> Let me come up a bit if I want to do that. You're five meters up, it's not that tall. You can just barely see two cables in bubble right under the porch. <clears throat> Not seeing them there. Yeah, they just came out of frame. Did we lateral over them? I think we're running parallel to them right now. Okay, so go back back to the uh, south a little. Yeah, you must have, I missed them, sorry. Good idea, AJ. Uh, lateral right. Cables will lead to the hydrophone. I think the case, so the cables are like a little behind you, um, like parallel to the porch. So I think they're just west. Oh, parallel to the porch. Yeah, sorry. Like, you back if you keep backing up i think they might come into frame okay yeah. looks like they're currently in your frame the hook i'm going to turn on the down light since we can't see the hook anyway so we'll, we'll pick them up here i know where the hook is 